So hello from Green Mopeds in South West London. So today we are taking out the uh, other primary model from uh, Silence in the UK, which is the SO2. Um, just to recap a little bit on the range and the company. So Silence are out of Spain. Uh, they say that other than BMW, they are the only European manufacturer, or only manufacturer to uh, manufacture all their own parts in Europe. Um, but anyway, the, the range that the UK have consists of four models. There is the sort of flagship product, which is SO1, uh, 5,000 pounds on the road, nine kilowatts max, 62 miles an hour, 70 to 80 mile range, uh, 15 inch front wheel, 14 inch back wheel, uh, 300 odd, 330 kilo carrying capacity, space under the seat for two helmets, a 40 kilo, 5.6 kilowatt hour battery uh, that comes out on its own trolley. And then you have the SO2 range, and there are three of those. There is the SO2 standard, if you like, which is um, essentially the same power and battery as the SO1, but 300 pounds cheaper. Um, it's in this SO2 format, so you don't get storage under the seats like you would do with an SO1. Um, you also don't get as big a wheels um, but the range would be the same, the performance would be the same, it's still a 125cc. Um, I guess the reason to choose that one over the SO1 would probably be just price, uh, because as I say it is £300 cheaper. Um, and then you have two other SO2 models, of which this is almost both of them. <laughs> the only difference between the SO2 LS and the SO2 LS long range is the battery. Okay, so basically, these are both 28 mile an hour bikes. They are 1.5 kilowatt motors, hub mounted, so 50cc equivalent, two horsepower, and the only real difference is that the long range one has the battery out of the SO1 in it and the standard low speed one has its own two kilowatt hour battery instead okay but still same form factor on its little trolley that you pull out um, there is or should be a way of uh, you know if you had a small fleet of a mix of so1s and so2s you should be able to interchange the batteries between them um, if you needed to, okay, but uh, there's some clarification needed on that. Um, so yeah, this is technically the SO2 LS low speed. So this has got the two kilowatt hour battery in it, okay. Um, interestingly, for a 1.5 kilowatt motor, it feels more sprightly than most 1.5 kilowatt motor, sorry, yeah, 1.5 kilowatt motor uh, bikes. 1.5 kilowatts is only two horsepower and we've talked about this before in as much as you know 1.5 kilowatts your kettle has more power than that but of course on these sorts of um, machines the efficiency of the motor is is uh, you know almost 80 to 90 percent okay so you're actually using most of those uh, horses whereas obviously on petrol bikes if you had a, uh, a two horsepower petrol bike, you're wasting probably 70 odd percent of that. Okay, so it's not uh, a fair comparison to say, okay, 1.5 kilowatts uh, electric is the same as a two horsepower petrol. It shouldn't be uh, compared like that because on horsepower terms, it does also depend on the efficiency. Okay, so um, something to bear in mind. Hence, if you had a two horsepower petrol bike, it wouldn't be doing this. It would really be struggling because that's it's basically going to have something like 
less than half a horsepower to actually propel the thing. Whereas here we've still got uh, most of that power. So as you can see, I'm, I'm cruising along. It says 30. I doubt it's doing 30. It's probably, you know, if you actually measured it properly, it's probably doing the 28 that it's supposed to. Okay. Um, and yeah, as I say, it, uh, it picks up well considering it is only a 1.5 kilowatt motor. So that's a good thing. Um, in fact, I'll try and do a naught to top on a road somewhere and then I'll measure it and put the time up for you uh, so that you can actually see it. So the, the main reason to take these, uh, the LS or the uh, LSLR, um, is delivery. So these bikes are, the layout of these bikes is in actual fact, um, you get uh, you know a seat for the, the rider, uh, but the rear passenger, if you had one, would get sort of a pad, and you'll see this on the uh, on the static review. Uh, so it's a bit like, in some ways, the CPX from Super Soco. They do a main seat, and then they put on a pad uh, for the rear passenger. Um, this one, obviously, you can order without the pad at all, and then just put on a top box. And that top box, um, Silence themselves, provide one that's over 300 litres. Um, it's enough to get a person in it. I mean, they, they show photos with people in these inside these things. That's how big it is. Okay, um, the uh, carrying capacity of this bike is 282 kilos. Okay, so um, interestingly, that is less than the SO1. So the SO1 is 330 kilos uh, carrying capacity. Um, it's probably because of the power that you've got. Um, but you've also got smaller wheels. Um, Silence in Spain do something called an SO3, which has got two wheels at the back. So that is probably more suitable for the heavier loads. Um, but anyway, 282 kilos is still quite a lot. Uh, without the battery in it, this bike weighs about 80 kilos. Okay. And the way you get to the uh, battery is to lift up the seat. There's a catch. You lift the catch and then you pull out the battery from the left-hand side. Okay, then it comes with the charger integrated into the battery, so you don't have to carry a charger as well, which is quite good because the storage space underneath here is literally enough for the kettle lead that uh, comes with the bike. Okay, but charging time on this, uh, if it was flat, is three to four hours. But I have to say, um, although the quoted range um, is something like 50 four kilometers which is over 30 miles the bike isn't telling me that it can do that when I fully charged the battery and I plugged it in and turned the bike on it said 21 miles on city mode okay and not a lot of difference between city mode and eco mode okay so 21 miles um, is probably not too useful the only other bike that uh, we do that does that sort of range is something like a uh, NIU UQI Pro okay and that is half the price of this bike so um, I imagine what you're going to do would take the low speed long range option okay um, but we'll come back to prices in a little while so the way this works is that um, it's got two modes. So as I've said before, you are probably on these, on these uh, lower rated bikes, as in the bikes with uh, lower power, the eco mode, um, this one's better than most. The, the speed that you can get to on eco mode on this bike is 18 miles an hour, okay? Um, there's probably a use for that if you're in 20 mile zones and you just don't want to worry about uh, speeding. Okay, so you can literally set it into eco mode and you just press the button here and you see it flashing and it goes into eco mode. You also see the range change a little bit. It's only two miles difference between both of them. Um, but eco mode will get you to 17 miles an hour. Okay, so um, again, not a lot of uh, speed there uh, but as I say most roads in London now are 20 miles an hour anyway so if you just want to set it and forget your speed then that would be a way to do it okay um, anyway so 
I'm not using uh, Ecomo by the way. <laughs> uh, I've decided that I'm going to stick in city. All right. So um, as you can see, the the uh, the other bikes, like the S, the L three E bikes, the one two five cc bikes, uh, they also have a sport mode. Okay, this one doesn't have that. Uh, one thing about riding this bike and about how this bike is um, uh, running in general, and all all silence bikes is that you have this delay between pressing the mode button and it engaging, okay? I don't know if you saw that, there's a flash. It flashes for two or three times, so you know maybe a couple of seconds before it actually engages. So you need to sort of build that into how you will ride the bike, okay? So as you see, one, two, three, and then it engages, okay? One, two, three, and then it engages. That's not um, a problem per se, it's just that it's the riding style. Other bikes that do this um, include the Vespa Electrica, but by the time you've gone through their menu system and you've pressed and held select, that takes about six or seven seconds and you are freewheeling while you do that. You don't have to do that on this bike, uh, thank God, uh, but it does have this um, essentially a slight pause between engaging modes, um, not a problem. They also say that this bike comes with reverse gear, although I cannot find it. so. <laughs> and uh, maybe that's on a, a, another model. Um, around the dash, so you've got your dash layout here, this is your consumption of energy. It says there's regen, um, I haven't yet got it to engage regen, but uh, I presume it will at some point. You've got a USB port, something to hang luggage on, and you can get a sensor bag for the bike, another storage bike, but there's no cubby hole for uh, anything, which may or may not be a problem. You can obviously put the, the uh, phone either onto here or obviously onto this which is an option okay so you can add this this is only actually available on the so2s not on the so1s but it is quite a, a nice way of uh, storing your phone so you can see it's got hydraulic brakes front and back okay and um, disc brakes front and back ventilated discs uh, like a few other bikes it has different size front and rear wheels okay um, again not particularly unusual uh, they do that to um, basically create space for storage often. Um, the bigger front wheel is uh, always good because of stability and stuff like that. The uh, profile of the tyres is, is uh, quite substantial, so it's a 120, so they are quite wide. Um, unlike the SO1 though, these are not Pirellis, these are uh, another brand, I think it's RST. Okay, so um, uh, I was saying that it was good to see a brand that has uh, non-Chinese or recognisable uh, tyres on it, but uh, that hasn't flown down to uh, flowed down to the SO2. But um, I guess you can't have everything. Okay. So as you can see, uh, it rides really well. I, as I said, I'm surprised that a 1.5 kilowatt motor. Um, so to compare. This is a little bit more than something like an MQI Plus Sport, the UQI GT Pro, um, the Super Soccer CUX, uh, Hormini K1 base power we're talking about, um, and it uh, it does uh, accelerate uh, quite well. Um, <clears throat> so, other things to tell you about, obviously the battery is the same form factor as the SO1. Um, they are interchangeable, although I think there is um, there is a, a change in design that uh, you would have to ensure that the if you were to have uh, like a small fleet of mixed uh, SO1s and SO2s, you would have to ensure that the battery from whichever bike is the same as the battery uh, from the other one. As in the connectors, there are there has been a change in connectors that uh, uh, I understand um, is happening. So in other words, if you wanted to mix and match them, you need to check that you are getting batteries that are actually interchangeable if you're ordering a mixed fleet. Okay. Um, in terms of colours, there is uh, the same colours, green, black and uh, white. And um, obviously branding would be available if you're doing um, a fleet sort of uh, setup. Uh, in terms of price, so oh, uh, just do range. So, as I said, SO2 uh, long range is up to 90 
miles quoted on WMTC uh, testing criteria. So that is, uh, that is a good amount. Let's knock off 20% like we normally do, and that's still a good 70 miles. Um, there aren't many, if any, that will really do that. Um, so that's enough for a shift, okay, which, or typical shift, which is about 70 miles, okay. Um, if you had the low speed one, this one, with the two kilowatt hour battery, it's telling me 24. Um, it told me 21 when I turned it on, so um, it's obviously the way I'm riding it is uh, giving me more range. Um, I'm not sure whether. 24 miles is going to be acceptable. I mean, for some people, obviously, just poodling around, it will be fine. But uh, you're probably going to end up with the long-range one. So in terms of prices, 2695 is this model. So low speed, no long range, okay, with the 2 kilowatt hour battery, okay? And then the uh, long-range version with the 5 kilowatt hour battery is £900 more. Okay, so the 90 mile range version, 900 pounds more, 28 miles an hour still. So that's 3595. Okay, if you decided to go to the standard SO2, as in the 60 mile an hour version, that is 4695. Uh, so 300 pounds less than the SO1. Okay, so companies do, if you think about you know, EasyJet and Ryanair, they standardize on a bike in different configurations. Sorry, they standardize on a plane. So EasyJet has Airbus, uh, sorry, Boeing 737s, and that's all they will have. This could be that bike. You could have SO2 LS, SO2 LSLR, SO2 SO1, okay? And you know that you've got interchangeable parts, you've got interchangeable batteries, and battery standardization is something that is, uh, would be welcome if, if uh, the industry could uh, sort that out. I know there's a couple of different camps that are saying that they're going to standardize, but um, it's not going to be cross industry. It's going to be groups of uh, brands doing that. Um, but yeah, this could be that sort of bike where you take different models for different requirements and have standardization. Okay. So. Yeah, 2695 for this one, 3595 for the long range version, and 4695 for the uh, L3E 62 mile an hour version. Okay. Um, so I hope that's been useful. Obviously, we're going to do a static review. We'll put one side by side next to an SO1. We um, obviously will put this up on our YouTube channel, so it'd be good to subscribe to know when the other reviews are coming out. And if you have any questions or would like to test ride the bike, then please let us know at hello at green-mopeds.com. And thanks very much.